Hello to all. I am Vishnu. So in this video, I am going to talk about patient counseling for fibroid uterus. Now, fibroid uterus uh, is not a very uncommon condition. The motive of this video is not just to educate you, but also to give you an insight as in how I make my notes. Number one, because I have already made my notes. If you want a reference of that, you can WhatsApp me. And number two, it will also give you an insight as in how I study non-pharmacotherapy because pharmacotherapy we all study but non-pharmacotherapy is something that somewhere we are on the back foot because for example if we say that you should avoid this particular thing in this particular disease and if they ask you what is the reason we don't know the reason. So those kind of knowledge you know will never be fruitful it will never help you in the long run. So let's talk about fibroid uterus. So fibroid uterus is also known as uterine leiomyomas, but usually we call it as uterine fibroids or fibroid uterus. So they are usually non-cancerous tumors. So they can go grow within the uterine wall or they can grow outside the uterine wall. Based on that and based on different symptoms that the female experiences, we can classify uterine fibroids into five. So the first is intramural fibroids. Intramural fibroid is the most common. So if the growth is very huge, then it can cause unnecessary stretching of the uterus or the womb. That can cause prolonged heavy periods and you know pain in the abdomen or pelvic region. But this is the most common intramural fibroids. Then we have subserosal fibroids. Now this is very interesting. Subserosal fibroids usually grow outside the uterine wall and as the size of that you, uh, fibroid increases, it can actually put pressure on the bladder and that is why there are certain females who report urinary incontinence or who have you know difficulty in urination when they are having uterine fibroids. So in that condition it is known as subserosal fibroids. In another condition, it has been seen that in subserosal fibroids, if they bulge from the back side of the uterus, then they put pressure on the spinal cord also and that can lead to backache. So that is why backache is also a symptom that can be seen with uterine fibroids. Then we have pedunculated fibroids. They usually are very, very small growths. They usually don't grow in size. They are small, small pea size growths or something like that. Then we have submucosal fibroids. They just grow below the uterine lining. And uh, this is not very common. Um, they actually can also cause uh, problems in getting pregnant, you know, fertility and all those things. And the last one is the most rare and that is called cervical fibroids. So they usually grow inside the cervical tissue. And this is the rarest. So intramural fibroids is the most common and cervical fibroids is the least common type of uterine fibroids. Now if you look at the risk factors, there are a lot of risk factors. If you have a family history, if your age is in between 30 to 40 years of age, uh, maybe if you are a person who takes a lot of junk food, if you are a person who is taking high estrogenic diets, or maybe if you are a person who takes a lot of processed foods, because processed food means it contains large amount of chemicals and most of them trigger the growth of, you know, production of estrogen. So that is bad. So if you are obese, that is an amazing risk factor for uterine fibroids. That is why weight reduction is important. Hypothyroidism is also a very interesting risk factor for uterine fibroids and I'll tell you the reason why because the function of the liver is to metabolize estrogen and in hypothyroidism the property of the liver to metabolize estrogen reduces so in that condition estrogen level increases and when estrogen level increases it can cause breast cancer and it can also increase the risk of uterine fibroids if uh, a female had an early puberty that is below 10 years of age that can also increase the risk of uterine fibroids in the long run and if a, if a female frequently takes birth control pills that can also increase estrogen levels cause hormonal imbalance and that can also increase the risk of uterine fibroids. 
Now let's talk about what are the things that you can do and what are the things that you should avoid if a female is at risk or is already suffering from uterine fibroids. You should increase your intake of organic food because organic means it is unprocessed in nature. That means additives or chemicals and all these things will be less. However, sometimes in some cases organic foods are much more costly but actually it is good for your health. So, you know what happens in processed foods and all, uh, it has been seen that pesticides are used or maybe some kind of chemicals and all are used. So, that can actually cause hormonal imbalance in females. So, you should focus on organic foods. You should increase your intake of green leafy vegetables. Now, green leafy vegetables have two benefits. First benefit, it has anti-inflammatory effects. It has been seen that more the inflammation more the weight gain and more the risk of fibroids. So anti green leafy vegetables usually have anti-inflammatory effects thanks to uh, you know some amount of magnesium that is found in it that can help in reducing fibroid growth and also green leafy vegetables they have high level of vitamin K. So vitamin K usually increases blood clotting you know very well that is why the antagonist of you know warfare and poisoning is vitamin K. So increased blood clotting means that can control menstrual bleeding because in uterine fibroids as I said you know prolonged heavy periods and all is seen so that can render the female anemic also. So this is one thing that you can do. You can maybe increase your intake of cruciferous vegetables for example broccoli cabbage because they are very powerful liver detoxifiers. If you are taking fresh fruits also for especially apple that also helps in detoxifying the liver. So when the liver is detoxified, it will improve the capacity of the liver to metabolize estrogen. So that is good. You can increase your intake of beta carotene rich foods because beta carotene rich foods also helps, you know, that means it will lead to vitamin A and vitamin A also helps in growth and repair of damaged tissue. So that can also be good for, you know, uh, fibroid uterus for example carrots you know sweet potato spinach these are all rich in beta carotene if you are a person who is suffering from anemia then definitely iron rich food is something that can be suggested to you you know very well flax seeds also have been found to you know balance estrogen levels so and obviously it is good for weight loss also so you can have dual benefits and uh, you can try maybe fish oil also. Fish oil is also, you know, the benefit of flaxseed oil and fish oil is they contain healthy fatty acids. They reduce inflammation. So that is good. Vitamin B complex is very interesting because, you know, vitamin B nutrients are actually required by the liver to carry out its normal functions in life. So if the liver has to function properly, vitamin B complex nutrients are important. So if you are having vitamin B complex or vitamin B something deficiency, then that can also uh, reduce the capacity of the liver to function, which can increase the risk of uterine fibroids. Then uh, what are the things that, uh, you know, maybe you can uh, try some best foods, you know, the foods that contain phytonutrients. So for example, phytonutrients usually increase, uh, decrease inflammation, decrease fibroids. Like for example, berries, garlic, cauliflower, tomato, onion, like this kind of things. What are the things that you should avoid? Conventional dairy. Because conventional dairy means it is non-organic in nature. So it is rich in steroids. So that can, you know, cause problems with your hormone control. Alcohol consumption should be reduced. Because it increases inflammation, it damages the liver in the long run. So that can again reduce the capacity of estrogen metabolism. Caffeine intake. If you are a person who takes a lot of caffeine beverages or you drink a lot of coffee in a day, then this will not be good for fibroids because caffeine also puts pressure on the liver. So that can compromise the function of the liver to metabolize estrogen. Then you should stay away from fatty processed meats, you know, refined sugar, refined carbohydrates because they cause inflammation and increase obesity. So this is just an idea that I wanted to share with you. I hope this video is informative for you. Thank you for listening. See you in the next video. Until then, it's bye.